Good day, grade 10s. Welcome to this next lesson in chemistry. In this lesson, we're going to continue working through quantitative aspects of chemical change. So in the last lesson, we spoke, lesson we spoke about um, moles and molar mass and that type of thing. In this lesson, we're going to move on to working with both moles and molar mass. So the equation, as we spoke about last week, was that the number of moles in is equal to mass over the molar mass. Okay, that is the formula that you find on your formula sheet. Sheet. <laughs> now what we're going to do is we're going to look at how we would use it. So it says calculate the number of moles of copper there are in a sample of mass 127 grams. Okay, so therefore we say that the number of moles is mass over molar mass. Number of moles is mass over molar mass. We've been given the mass, it's 127 grams. Now we need to go find the molar mass of copper. So what I've done is I just need to go back there first. And then let's go look at the periodic table. And here is copper. And copper is 63.5, 63.5. So let us go back here and we've got the molar mass of copper is 63.5 grams per mole. So you can see why it's important that you guys know what the actual um, the symbol is for copper because otherwise we wouldn't have been able to find the molar mass. So now we can say number of moles is the mass, which is 127, over the molar mass, which is 63.5. And now I need to go find my calculator and I haven't opened it for today. That was just silly. Um, right. And there it is. Okay, fine. So let's go. We are looking for 127 divided by 63.5 and that's 2. So the number of moles of, of copper that there are in a sample of mass 127 grams is 2. Right, let's look at a different example. It says calculate the number of atoms there are in a sample of aluminium that has a mass of 95 grams. Okay, so the whole point about atoms is the fact that we spoke about the fact that one mole had the equivalent of Avogadro's number of elementary particles in it, okay? So in other words, one mole had 6.023 times by 10 to the 23 elementary elementary particles in it, okay? 6.02 times by 10 to the 23 elementary particles in it. I apologize for bad handwriting. Okay, so what we are saying is that one mole has got 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms in it. So first we need to find out the number of moles of aluminium in a mass of 95 grams. So we're going to go number of moles is mass over the molar mass, which is 95 over the molar mass of, of aluminium. So I'm hoping you know that aluminium is a L. Okay, so let's go find it. And AL is, let's see, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, there it is. And it has a molar mass of 27. So that's 27. So now let's get out a calculator. And that's going to be 95 divided by 27, which equals, that doesn't help at all, 3.52 moles. Remember, we always round off to two decimal places. And if you go look at back at the calculator, if you're rounding off to two decimal places, you look at the third space. The third space here was an eight, which means we're rounding the one up. 
so it becomes 3.52. So we get 3.52 moles. But that wasn't the question. The question was how many atoms? And we know that one mole has got 6.02 times 5, 10 to the 23 atoms. So therefore, we don't have one mole. We've got 3.52 moles. So we're going to go 3,52 multiplied by 6.02 times 10 to the 23, which equals what? So we're going to take 3.52 point five five two and we're going to multiply it by six point zero two exponent twenty three and that is equal to two point one two because again we look at the third number after the decimal so that's a nine so that rounds it up to two so it's two point one two times ten to the twenty four so that equals 2 comma 1 2 times 10 to the 24 atoms. That's a lot of atoms in 95 grams of aluminium. Sure, a lot of atoms. Okay, so obviously you can see that the atoms are actually very small. Right, now let's just compare the difference between molar mass and formula mass. Okay, so molar mass is used for elements. And formula mass is used, or formula units, is used for compounds. So it's still equal to one mole of that compound and still has 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules. So what you might see on an exam is it says calculate the molar mass of sulfuric acid, HSO4. What they really mean is the formula mass, okay? But it's the same thing. You are going to basically just add up the molar masses of all the individual elements, okay? So the molar mass of hydrogen is 1. The molar mass of sulfur is 32. I'll prove it to you. Just hang on a second. Sulfur is 32 and oxygen is 16. So we go back and the molar mass of oxygen is 16. So then all we do is when we're finding the formula mass, which is exactly the same method, except now we do it for the molecule, we're basically going to go, well, the two hydrogens, so it's two times one, plus one sulfur, so it's just 32, plus there are four oxygens, so it's four times 16. So it's two plus 32 plus six fours are going to be, six fours, it's going to be 64, so that there is going to be, that is, uh, hang on, I can get this. That's a six and a nine, so it's two plus 96, which is 98 grams per mole. Okay, grams per mole. So again, exactly the same thing. This is the formula mass of sulfuric acid. Sometimes in the exams, they do something silly and they'll ask you for the molar mass. They mean the same thing. Okay, and then you've got the 6.02 times our 10 to 23 molecules. So before that, elementary particles were atoms and now they are molecules. So let's look at an example like this, where it says calculate the mass of three moles of ammonium hydroxide. This is ammonium, ammonium hydroxide. And grade tens, it goes both ways. You need to be able to read this NH4OH as ammonium. NH4 is ammonium and OH is hydroxide. Similarly, if I wrote out ammonium hydroxide, you need to be able to convert it into NH4OH, okay? So now again, number of moles is mass over molar mass. They want the mass of three moles. Therefore, do you agree that mass is gonna be number of moles times the molar mass? So therefore, mass is equal to three times by the molar mass of this or the formula mass of this. So we've got molar mass of nitrogen is 14. The molar mass of hydrogen is one. And the molar mass of oxygen is 16. So this becomes 14 plus, how many hydrogens do you have in total? You've got that four there 
and one over there. So that makes it five. So it's going to be five times one plus an oxygen, which is 16. Okay. So that becomes three times 16 plus 14 is 30. So it's 35, which is going to be three fives of 15, carry one, three threes and nines, 10. So it's 105 grams. And note that ask for the mass, not the molar mass. So therefore it's just 105 grams. Again, they want you to calculate the mass of 5.2 moles of calcium nitrate. And again, you need to be able to write this out both ways. Calcium nitrate, okay? So this one's a little bit more complicated because what this bracket is saying is that for every calcium, there are two nitrates joined on. That is what that little two is saying. That for every calcium, we've got two nitrates. So the molar mass is going to be dependent on obviously calcium. Oh, sorry, let me delete it. There we go. Mm. Wrong color, but it doesn't matter. The molar mass of nitrogen, the molar mass of oxygen. Okay, so let's go look at the molar mass of calcium, which is 40. Nitrogen is 14 and oxygen is 16. Okay, so now if we had to add up this lot, okay, it is going to be 40 plus two times whatever's in this bracket, okay, which is 14 plus three times 16. Okay, do you understand that? Inside this bracket, there's a nitrogen, which is 14, there are also three oxygens. But for every one calcium, there are two of these nitrate groups, so we multiply that by two. So that becomes 40 plus two times 14 plus six threes are 18. That becomes 48, which is 40 plus two times by 48 is 12, 62, which is 40 plus that's a four and that's a 12, which is 164. Now, some of you might be wondering why I did this like this instead of using my calculator. Great tens, I'd like to urge you to not always go straight to your calculator and I'll tell you why. Um, when you get to grade 12 and maybe even grade 11, depending on how eager you are, you can get to write NBTs, National Benchmarking Tests, okay? And admittedly, they don't have um, a category for science. They've got English and then literature, math, and then mathematical literature and mathematics. And then I think there might be another component depending on what degree you want to do. But the point is that for the math literature, mathematic, mathematical literacy and the mathematics sections, you can't take a calculator in. And what I find is that a lot of my students, by the time they get to matric, because they've been using their calculators all the time, they find it very difficult to go back to not using calculators. And they really struggle to do well in the MBTs. So I'd really like you to urge you that if you're doing this as an example, in other words, it's not in the exams, there's no time constraint, then please try and you can check it with your calculator, but please try and do the stuff in your head or like I've done here with uh, just using my brain to multiply. The reason being is that the more practice you get in doing things with your with in your head like the calculations and things, the easier it gets, okay? Like with anything else, it's the same as surfing or playing a sport. The more you practice, the better you get at it, right? Um, so the point is that if you do that, then we will be very, then when you actually have to go write your NBTs, you'll be much better off than the student who has um, struggled or will be struggling because all they've done is use their calculator the whole time. Okay, so please guys, I'm urging you, in fact, with my students, my private students, not the school students I teach at school, I actually don't let them use the calculators unless they really have to um, <laughs> because I need them to practice for NBTs. 
Okay, so now after that little speech, we now have that the molar mass of calcium nitrate is 164 grams per mole, right? So now we can find the mass using this formula here. We're going to use that formula. I'm just going to change color so you can see what I'm doing. So we know that the mass is number of moles times the molar mass, which is 5,2 times 164. And it's just to show you, I don't have any feelings about not using a calculator. It's 5.2 multiplied by 164. And that gives you 852,8. So it's 852,8 grams. There you go. Right, now let's talk about a different type of question. The next type of question you get is a composition type question. So what you need to know is that knowing the empirical molecular formula of a compound can help to determine the composition in more detail, right? Similarly, knowing the composition can help us to determine the formula. Now, there are four different types of composition type questions, okay? There are four different types of composition questions. One is you're given the formula and you must be able to calculate the percentage by mass. Two, you're given the percentage composition and you must be able to calculate the formula. Or you're given the product of a chemical reaction, you must be able to calculate the formula of the reactants. And finally, you find the number of moles of water of crystallization. Okay, so what are we gonna do is we're gonna work through a type of each type of question okay and make sure you guys understand the different types of questions okay once we've done that we'll go look at some exam paper questions okay so the first one says calculate the percentage by mass of the elements in the compound okay so what we're saying is it says calculate step one week it says calculate the percentage that each element contributes to the overall mass of sulfuric acid so we've got sulfuric acid which is made up of two hydrogens one sulfur and four oxygens now they want us to calculate the mo they want us to calculate the percentage that each element contributes okay so the first thing we need to do is find the molar masses of each of these things right so do you agree that hydrogen is the molar mass of hydrogen is one, okay? The molar mass of sulfur is, I think it's 32. Sulfur, 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 sulfur is 32, yes it is, 32. And the molar mass of oxygen is 16. But now what they really want us to do is find out the molar mass of the hydrogen in this compound, which means that the molar mass of the hydrogen in the compound is one multiplied by two because they're two hydrogens, which is two. The, and so it's two grams per mole, okay? The molar mass of sulfur remains 32 because there's only one sulfur atom in a molecule of sulfuric acid. And the molar mass of oxygen is four times 16, which means it's going to be 84 grams per mole. Okay, now it says calculate the molecular mass. That's the same as the formula mass of sulfuric acid. So now we want to know the full mass of the whole sulfuric acid. So that's really easy. We know what the molar mass of the hydrogen is in total. We know what the molar mass of sulfur is, and we know what the molar mass of all the oxygen is. So to find the molecular mass of sulfuric acid, all we're going to do is add these three. So we're going to go two plus 32 plus, that's actually a 64, shame, 64. Okay, which equals what? Well, that becomes 34 plus 64, which is 98 grams per mole. Okay, now it says use the equation percentage by mass is equal to the atomic mass over the molecular mass by, times by 100 over 1. So what we do now is we're finding the percentage of hydrogen, the percentage of sulfur, and the percentage of oxygen that makes up sulfuric acid. 
So the total mass of hydrogen is 2 out of the full 98 grams times by 100 over 1. Sulfur is going to be 32 over 98 times 100 over 1. And oxygen is going to be 64 over 98 times by 100 over 1. Okay, so let's work that out using our calculators. So we're going to go 2 divided by 98 equals times by 100 equals and press the C button. And that gives you 2.04%. So hydrogen makes up 2,04%. Let's go look at sulfur. So sulfur is 32 divided by 98 times by 100 equals that's 32.65%. That's 32,65%. And finally, we've got 64 divided by 98 equals times by 100 equals, and press the SC button, 65.31. 65.31. So that's 65,31 percent. Okay, so now we know the percentage by mass of the elements in the compound is that 65 percent of this thing is oxygen, 32.65 percent is sulfur, and only two percent is hydrogen. Okay, not too difficult here. Right, let's look at a different type of question. This one says determine the empirical formula of a compound. Okay, I really like these questions and they come up quite often, so let's make sure you know how to do it. It says, a compound contains 52.2% carbon, 13% hydrogen, and 34.8% oxygen. Okay, so it sounds like a very scary question, and they determine the empirical formula, which is your basic formula. It gives you the basic ratio of all the different elements. Okay, so it sounds like a very scary question, but if you pretend that you've got a hundred grams of the compound, okay? Then do you agree that I can take these into a ratio of a hundred? So I could say that I've been given 52,2 grams of carbon. I've been given 13 grams of hydrogen and I've given 34,8 grams of oxygen. Okay, right. Now I want to find the ratio in moles, the ratio in moles. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to divide by the molar mass because we say that this is the mass and we know that the number of moles is mass over molar mass. So if I want to find the molar average, the molar ratio, I'm going to divide by the molar mass. The way we do this is we write it like this, C, H, O. Okay, so this is 52,2, this is 13, and this is 34,8. We're going to divide this by 12 because that's the molar mass of carbon. We're going to divide this by 1 because that's the molar mass of hydrogen. And we're going to divide this by 16. Okay, so let's get out our calculators. So this is 52 divided by 12. Um, let's try again. That's 52.2 divided by 12 equals 4.35. So that's 4,35 moles to 13 moles to 34.8 divided by 16 equals 2.18. 2.18. Okay, so do you agree that 2.18 is the smallest number? And whenever we talk in ratios, we always want one of the numbers to be a 1 so that you can compare things to even numbers, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to divide all of these by the smallest number. So do you agree that becomes 1? 2,18 divided by 2,18 is 1, okay? Now let's do 13 divided by 2.18, which equals 
4.35,96 and then we've got 4.35 divided by 2.18, no, 18 equals 1,995, so it's basically 2. Okay, 1,995 is basically 2. So do you agree I could round this up to 6? Okay, so we've got 2, 6, and 1. So therefore, the formula for this thing is C2H6O. We've got two carbons, six hydrogens, and one oxygen. And the reason we can just round this up is the simple reason that we obviously rounded things year and year and year in order to get our answers. Okay, so there is the empirical formula. The empirical formula is the most basic formula you can get for a compound. Okay, now let's look at a different question. It says, determine the formula of a compound. Okay, it says 207 grams of lead combines with oxygen to form 239 grams of lead oxide. Okay, so we've got 207 grams of lead PB plus O2, which forms 230 grams of PBO. Okay, but we don't know the ratio that this is formed. Okay, let's go look at a periodic table. PB is plumbum, uh, which is over here. So that has got a valency of four, and oxygen has a valency of two. Okay, so therefore we are going to need to use two oxygens to find one plumbum. Okay, and this is just silly. I don't know why they've told us this. I think we're missing part of the question. I'll come back to this question, okay? Um, I'm not 100% sure what they were asking us to do there. Right, let's look at the difference between empirical and molecular formula. Vinegar, as you know, is the dilute form of acetic acid. So we've got a sample of acetic acid which has the following percentage composition, 39.9% carbon, 6.7% hydrogen, and 53.4% oxygen. Then it says determine the empirical formula of acetic acid. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. We've got carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. We are given 39,9% of carbon. We are given 6,7% of hydrogen and 53,4% of oxygen. And we're going to assume that those are grams, that so that's the mass. We're now going to divide by the molar mass, okay, to get the number of moles for a mole ratio. So that's going to be divided by 12, divided by 1, and divided by 16. So that's still 6,7. Let's have a look at this. We've got 39.9 divided by 12, which is 3,33. So that's 3,3, okay? And then we've got, sorry, 53.4 um, divided by 16, which equals 3,3. 3, 4 again, 3, 3, 4, and that's 3, 3, 4. So do you see there's actually kind of a ratio going on here? That's just 3.34, this is 3.34, this is 3 and this is 6.7. So do you agree I can divide everything by 3.34? I'm going to divide this by 3, 3, 4. I'm going to divide this by 3, 3, 4. I'm going to divide this by 3, 3, 4. So that is going to be a 1, a 1, and I'm pretty sure this is going to be close to down to 2. So let's have a look. 6.7 divided by 3.34 is equal to, yep, 2.006. That is effectively 2. So my empirical formula for acetic acid is CH2O. In other words, that is the smallest ratio that works for this. Okay, it's the smallest ratio. For every one carbon, 
there's two hydrogens and one oxygen. For every one carbon, there's two hydrogens and one oxygen. If there were two carbons, there'd be four hydrogens and two oxygens, and so on and so on. So that's the empirical formula. Now, the molecular formula actually tells you exactly what formula we're working with, okay? And it tells you that the molar mass of acetic acid is 60,06 grams, okay? The molar mass. So, if we had to add this up, okay, do you agree this would be 12 plus 2 plus 16, okay? There's 12 is the molar mass of carbon, 2 is the molar mass of hydrogen, and 16 is the molar mass of oxygen, okay? So, that's a naught, and it's a 1, 2, 3, 30. So, this is 30 grams per mole, right? But, but, they've told us that the molar mass, or the formula mass, of acetic acid is actually 60.06, which means it's going to have double this. So, therefore, oh, sorry, what did I do? Therefore, I actually wanted to change color. Therefore, we can say, therefore, we can say that since this is 30 grams and that the molecular formula of the new acetic acid is 60.06, the equation for the acetic acid is actually C2H4O2. Okay, there we go. Happy with that. Right, now we're going to look at waters of crystallization. Now, you need to understand with waters of crystallization that what we're saying is that you get crystals, right? And crystals, um, not all crystals, but some crystals have water molecules that are trapped inside the crystal lattice. So if we had to take those crystals and heat them up or crush them, it would release the water molecules. Okay, so every um, molecule of that compound will have some water molecules attached, attached to it. So in this case, if you look at this, we've got aluminum chloride dot NH2O. So what we are saying is that we've got aluminum chloride dot NH2O is that we've got a number of water of crystals, water of crystallization molecules that are attached to every aluminum chloride molecule. We don't know what that N is. It could be one, in which case we've got one water molecule attached to the aluminum chloride. If this is a two, we'd have two water molecules attached to the aluminum chloride. Okay, so now it says, Sheila heated some of the aluminum trichloride crystals until all the water evaporated and found that the mass after heating, after heating, was 2.5 grams, okay? But before heating, before heating, it was was five, this is 2.8, five grams, okay? So it says, what is the number of moles of water molecules in the aluminum trichloride before heating? So do you agree the difference between this, the difference between the before heating and, and after heating, that difference there is actually the water that was lost due to the heating, okay? So, we can say that the water lost, or the mass of the water lost, is going to be 5 grams minus 2,8 grams, which is 1,2 grams, right? But then, we want to know what is the number of moles of water molecules that were lost. So, we've got number of moles is mass over the molar mass. Now, we've got the mass that was lost is 1.2 grams. The molar mass of your water is going to be, obviously, 2 times hydrogen plus 1 times oxygen. So, that is going to be 1, 2 over 2 plus 16, which is 1, 2 over 18. Um, so let us do that because the number of moles is the mass of a molar mass. So that's going to be 1, 2 divided by 18 equals 0, 0, 0.67. So the number of moles of the water molecules 
in the aluminium track where before heating was naught comma I'm gonna get there naught comma naught six seven naught six seven moles okay happy right let's do one more question okay I don't know if we're gonna have time yeah we should okay it says yeah, I don't know if we're going to finish all of this. We'll see how we do. The reaction between magnesium and dilute hydrochloric acid is represented by the balanced equation. So you've got magnesium plus hydrochloric acid gives me magnesium chloride plus hydrogen. Okay. During an experiment, 1.5 grams of magnesium reacts with dilute excess hydrochloric acid to produce a hydrogen gas at SCP. Okay. Calculate the mass in grams of the hydrogen gas produced. Okay, so we've got Mg plus 2HCl goes to MgCl2 plus H2. And initially we've got 1,5 grams of magnesium. And they want to know the mass in grams of the hydrogen. So guys, you should know by now that we never ever work in grams. What are we working? We work in moles. So the first thing we have to do is convert the number of moles of magnesium, I mean the mass of magnesium to the number of moles. The number of moles is mass over molar mass, which is 1,5 divided by, so let's go find the molar mass of magnesium. It's 24. So divide by 24, which is equal to 1.5 divided by 24 equals 0.065, which is 0.063, 0.063 moles. Okay, so therefore we know that the molar mass of that magnesium that is reacting is 0.063. Yeah, but they want the mass of hydrogen. They want the mass of hydrogen. Do you agree that if we look at this equation, we've got to first check if it's balanced. So one magnesium, one magnesium, two hydrogen, two hydrogen, two chlorine, two chlorine. So it is balanced. Okay, and they want the mass of hydrogen. So do you agree that one mole of magnesium is going to give us one mole of hydrogen? Therefore, this 0.63 moles actually gives us sorry gives us the moles of okay it gives us the moles of hydrogen right so we want to find the mass so therefore mass is equal to number of moles times the molar mass the Number of moles is 0, 0, 0.063 multiplied by the molar mass of hydrogen. Remember, it's a dietic molecule, so it's 2. So, therefore, if we multiply this by 2, we get 0, 0, 0.125 grams. So, therefore, 0, 0.125 grams of hydrogen is produced. Right, great friends. We're going to leave it there. We will carry on with this question in the next science lesson, which is on Monday. Um, no, sorry, it's on Thursday. Have a great day.